Hey guys, it's Jeff. On this week's episode, I totally forgot to mention that my co-host Hari wasn't feeling well, so he couldn't be with us, but he'll be back with us next week. Thanks for watching or listening. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Chat GBC. Today I'm here with Zach Larson. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Yeah, so you're a communications ma media major. Mm -hmm. you're yeah, and yeah. You're I graduated last year. I'm in my master's right now uh, for marketing management. Oh, that's so. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you're on the uh, track and field team mm -hmm. cross country as well? or? Yeah, I'm now retired from cross country because I used up my eligibility. But yeah, I'm doing track right now. So. Uh, mid distance and you're also a filmmaker and photographer yeah yeah I like to do uh different kinds of things skits photos for people music videos sports all that kind of stuff so yeah that's awesome yeah. I know you you photographed Mac McClung which we'll definitely get into but yeah. you photographed him at the uh dunk contest mm -hmm. but we're definitely going to get into that um but first tell me about like how you found GBC and yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's actually pretty interesting, to be honest, because um, back in high school, I had a, a when I was on the cross country team, I had a teammate that was looking into Goldie Beacom. He didn't end up coming here. Uh, shout out Marquise. But he uh, he just had mentioned the school to me. And at that time, my junior senior year, I was like really locked in on like trying to find a place to run at like running was like my whole life at that time, because uh, I wasn't doing as much photographic stuff and all that. But I uh, got the email of the coach at the time, uh, Andy, Andrew Shear, and um, I kind of just emailed him. And then uh, a week or two later, or however long it was, he hit me back. And, um, you know, at the time, their their team just truthfully wasn't that uh, skilled or at the same level as we are now. That's grown a lot, the whole program between track and field and cross country. But um, I came on a, a visit. It was like one of the only college visits I actually did. Um, I came to Goldie Beacom, small school. There was a lot of construction going on. This was in like 2018, 2019. Um, I remember seeing in one of the episodes that you guys were talking about, about the market. There wasn't even like a cafeteria. It was like a fridge when I came in with like a, with little meals and whatnot. So um, yeah, I looked at the school and I, I wasn't even sure if I really was going to come here. Um, there was like Goldie Beacom. I was thinking about maybe staying local at East Stroudsburg or uh, possibly Shippensburg because they were like really well known for, for running and stuff like that. But um, I'm thankful I did. There's, I mean, we could talk about it later, what the school has done, but um, I just think everything happens for a reason. So I'm happy I came here, nice small school. And uh, the main reason was at the time scholarship and stuff like that. It, it uh, helped my family out, helped me out tremendously. So they yeah. looked after me. Yeah, that's amazing. No, let's let's talk about it. What are some of the things that, like, through your experience? Because I know there's both things that, you know, you've experienced at the college and then things with your, like, filmmaking and photography career outside. But, like, what are some things, you know, that the college has, you know, played a part in, you know, in, in your life and your, your journey? Yeah, I mean, there's two, there's, like, two things that come to mind with that, with that question. First, I think the school being uh, so small and just the nature of the school in itself, like, I feel like help is always there if you need it, whether it's people on campus that you build relationships with or people that you get to know. Um, the professors have, at least on my end, always been just very like, I don't want to say easy, like the classes are easy, but it's just more like, it's not like super strict, like they're there to help you. The school isn't trying to like just say, this is what you're going to do and you got to do it by then. Like people are going to be lenient and try to help you with certain things I've noticed over time and then um i think the school's also like in a in a great location so for stuff that i do um like with the music videos and and film and stuff like that i mean wilmington has its own market of people in the city but then you're also like an hour 15 from baltimore you're not too far from dc new york is up the way even though traffic it's a pain getting into New York, yeah. New Jersey, PA. So it's in a it's in a good spot too. Like the school has a lot of opportunity around, and I think um, although Delaware is small, like I said, you can build a lot of connections within Delaware and kind of expand out. Yeah, no, I feel the same way about because Cindy and I have talked a lot about like should we move with filmmaking things? Mm -hmm. Should we? But 
and I'm even now talking to my gaffer, Jeremy, so maybe I'll send this to him. <laughs> I was saying that to him last week. It's like 25, 30 minutes from Philly, not too oh, far yeah, from Philly. Baltimore. Yeah, two hours from D.C., mm-hmm. two hours from New York. Um, so there's so, And then as well, Wilmington has its own, you know, a lot of great things going on. Yeah. Um, so, and then uh, to your point, too, about the college kind of helping people through, I went to Montgomery College in Maryland, um, Germantown, Maryland, and uh, the college experience was so much different. Like, um, I couldn't get through some of the classes. Maybe part of that was me, you know, but also it was really like, are you, you know, they're just there to kind of get you, like, in the class and out. They don't care if they fail you. It doesn't yeah. matter, like, how you – do and I, I'm sure that's experience at a lot of places, but it was definitely different when I came to Goldie. It was like, you know, they kind of balanced everything that you brought here, yeah. and you know, trying to help you get to the to the next phase. Yeah, I, I agree. I think yeah. like that's a good word for it, balance. Like I'm able to do what I like need to do or want to do, but then also like you know, you still get taken care of over the time what you need to get taken care of, whether that's courses or. Um, like even with classes, they accust, uh, what's the word, accommodate it to your schedule with uh, track or whatever sport you do. And we're all Fridays, so yeah. that's also a huge plus. Like you don't see that. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know any school that does that, but yeah. so that's also a plus. Yeah, that's amazing. So you're a communications and media major. What are some things that you've done at Goldie, you know, maybe both in the class, but then, I, and I know I've seen a bunch of your skits and, uh, <laughs> and can't wait to get into <laughs> yeah. talking about some of the other work, but like specifically to Goldie Beacom, what are some things that like, how's your experience been in that program and, and what have you seen kind of, kind of change or anything? Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, not even just saying it cause I know you, I mean, we have lightning studios, uh, you know, anybody that, that wants to come here or that is here that might not know about what's going on with that. Like that's, that's your first step into the door, like being a media and communications major. You got to start at the school. Um, I mean, when I was when I was here, I tried getting involved with basketball and softball, a couple other things sports wise. And, uh, you know, tried to just be involved in a couple projects you did, like the mini movies and stuff. Um, so in that sense, with the school, that's kind of what where I was at. Um, uh, the the major itself, though, like only started like halfway into my my time being here so in like 2021 or something they introduced it so I think the school still needs time to develop that because to my knowledge this is mainly like a business school I feel like a lot of focus on the schools like accounting finance uh things of that nature so I mean they a lot of classes I did weren't here they were at like uh DCAD which is some art school in in Wilmington another school in like PA I just kind of did a lot of online courses but I learned like a couple things like a Photoshop Adobe Illustrator I took like a painting class to understand like how to color things so that was kind of interesting so I think it's still kind of in it in its infancy and its sorts but uh just trying to like get in with lightning studios and like you know you're very welcoming you are there to help people so I think that's like the best way to go um, yeah at least when it comes to the school yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, mm-hmm. The shout out as well. But <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, the work you've done uh, specifically, let's start with the skits. So because mm-hmm. you have like one of them the other day I was going through and I saw like a day in the life of Zach Larson and yeah. it starts like a day in the life of anybody else. Yeah. And then it turns into like a classic, <laughs> like, you know, a Zach Larson video when you see yeah. it. So tell me about like <laughs> that, the personality and just those skits and where, how those came to be and then how where you see them going. Um. Yeah, I just uploaded one earlier today. I tried to get it on TikTok, but with copyright noises, they're they're killing me on TikTok. But I think with the skits, like just my whole life, like growing up, being in school, like I was cl- like literally got the class clown like award or whatever in high school. Um, I don't know where it exactly comes from. My my dad is like pretty humorous, but I don't know. I think growing up, I was a, like short. I was tinier than everybody, and like. Um, I don't know. I just think my way of getting around certain things was like was humor, just being funny and and just making jokes of everything. I try not to take like things too serious, like if you know me, like messages and stuff, even like that. So I think when it comes to skits, some of the skits I've done, they're not even up on my some of my pages anymore because some of them are a little a little uh, out of the ordinary to say the least, but I just like making people laugh. That's my thing. I just like to entertain people, make them laugh. And that's, that's where I'm most like happy, most comfortable is, uh, just making content, especially skits, like humor based stuff. So 
because when I was younger, like 12, 13, I started watching YouTube videos, getting into gaming videos, and just from there, I've just always been making like funny stuff. It's just who I am. Yeah. So do you? How does that work? Like the group that you do that with? Like do you have? Because I know a couple of years ago when I saw them, you had like friends, mm -hmm. people at school that kind of helped you with them. That yeah. were in them sometimes. Is that still the case? Or do you have somebody filming? It just really depends on the type of video. I mean, I feel like. Um, the way I, I do skits, I try to think of it, and then I'm trying to get it done, like, ASAP. So if people can't be around for it, I got to think of a way to, to just get it done on my own. I mean, um, sometimes I'll have my girlfriend sit there, hold the camera when it comes to certain things. Uh, and if I got to do it on my own, I'll do it on my own. But, yeah, I mean, my friends are usually willing to help. They, they enjoy it. Um, but a couple of the recent ones, I just had to do it on my own. But I got no problem with that. Yeah. But yeah, it, sometimes it takes a team, and other times you just got to do things yourself. Exactly. I have always <laughs> been a, 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 an advocate for just like making your own things, learning, and then you mm -hmm. know growing when when the time comes. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that doesn't come when you expect it to come, but you yeah. keep you know you keep learning. And it's it's so so interesting. Like you know, for your experience here as a, as a communications and media major, you know, I feel like it's you know, the things you've done, the stuff you've done for basketball and as well as softball, it's like, you know, you've taught yourself in a lot of ways. And uh, in a lot of ways, that's really beneficial. You probably like learned some things from YouTube. And um, yeah, so tell me about like how it's gone from finding that you have a passion to like make people laugh through the skits, mm -hmm. through your videos and like and the, as well. And then going into like teaching yourself how to do it. Like what's that experience yeah, I, been like? I think, like, the whole photo video thing, like, the only way you really are going to learn is, like, doing it. I mean, you could watch a lot of videos, but it's like, this is an art, you know? This like trying to paint on a canvas, but you're using a camera. You got to put your hands to it and really do it. You can't just replicate something just by looking at it. So, um, I mean, yeah, over time, like, you just learn. You see, you see yourself get better, your work get better over time. The first time I started doing, like, stuff like really getting into it was like 2019 and then to now it's like you just learn certain things about how to light certain things yeah. or make a shot or a certain angle look a certain way and it's a it's really a beautiful thing over time because it just ever evolves and yeah. I think we live in a, a great time now like you have YouTube and so many other resources out there to help like improve yourself your editing lighting things uh things like that um when it comes to me like even though that's my main thing, like I, I don't even know everything about, not everything about cameras, but like even some basic stuff. Like yeah. I just sit there to play with things and try to make it look good. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. That. No, that's interesting. Cause I, I was just about to comment on that. Like, I feel like I said something two years ago about like, Oh, I'm just now being able to bring to life the things that are in my head, you know? Cause that's the, when you're like coming up with the skits or a film idea or, you know, like the recent Super Bowl thing we did, it's like you have a vision in your head and only really you know what it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've heard even great directors talk about you. It, it's never going to live up to the way it is in your head. And so even that was so close, you know. And so it's like the further you get, the more you learn about it, the more there is to learn, yeah. you know. And that's kind of like the good and the bad thing. It's like, yeah. you know, the better you get, the better your stuff gets, but then the higher you shoot and then the more you have to learn and the you know, the less it, it yeah. kind of, it's, it's a deep, a deep field of, yeah. of stuff, depending on how far you want to go. Yeah. You can make things super simple or you can make things, we can make the walls fall off of this room. If we want slime come out the <laughs> the walls or whatever, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah. There's a lot of different rabbit holes to go into, Absolutely. but I really want to talk about, cause I, I was so proud to see you photographing Mac McClung mm -hmm. at the All-Star Game and yeah. the uh, dunk contest specifically. So tell me about that whole experience because I know he's on the 76ers like kind of um, – the he plays for like the uh, – the um, what are they called? The Philadelphia or the – Delaware Blue Coats. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's he's with another. I think he's with the Orlando now. He was just with with them for a year. Yeah. So he came to to, to like the they're like a Philadelphia affiliate team. Right? Yeah, like the farm team, minor league team, if you will. And Basically, so you, that's the Blue Coats. And you were photographing the team and all their events because I remember seeing all that work. So you got yeah. you built like a relationship with yeah, the players. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for so, sure. So tell me, how did it end up that you went to the dunk contest? Yeah, I mean. 
so what was this last year so my senior year so the end of my junior year I uh I don't even knew if I knew if I knew there was a team out here I forget how exactly I went uh to one of the games but I knew I could bring a camera they like G League games you could sit in the crowd and bring a camera which is rare for like some sporting events at least on the pro level because they don't let you really do that no more so um yeah I went a couple times and would just take pictures and uh, at the merch stand, there was a, a lady working, uh, Coach Angie, that's what I call her. Um, I just asked her, like, are there any positions open or whatever? And she just gave me her email. She was, like, doing a lot of the uh, community events and stuff like that. And uh, over time, like, I would just find out about events and literally just show up. They didn't have anybody really doing that. Um, they always had people taking pictures of the games. But when it came to the community, there wasn't a lot going on. And uh, especially in the summer, the blue coats do, like, like a hundred events over the over the summer sometimes two a day and you know there's just a few people making it happen so that, that was a great thing I would uh I was living in PA before I was trying to stay down here and I would try to just make it up from the Poconos to here like a two-hour drive or from New York two-hour drive like at least once a week so I was just always showing up doing something and there was a an event like a open gym event where kids would come and it was like a little basketball camp for the kids that the blue coats would host and uh, I did a video, and then it got up to one of the, the higher-ups there. He liked what I, what I was doing and, like, wanted to have an interview with me and talk more about possibly working with the team. And when I heard that, I was so excited. I remember he sent a text trying to set up a date, and I was like, yes, yes, yes. I, like, I was going to make the drive no matter what. Like, so that was a, a pretty cool thing. It really just uh, came to be just by showing up and just trying to be consistent. Um, when I put my mind to something, it's over. I just – it's it stays in there until I can make it happen. So, um, yeah, it wasn't till like November till I officially like signed a, a contract to to join the team. But um, I probably came at the best possible possible year for that team. They won a G League title. I got myself a little ring, so that was pretty pretty cool. That's amazing. Um, Mac McClung, first G League player to ever uh, go. I think go to a dunk contest and win the dunk contest. So being there for that was was incredible got to see LeBron all those kinds of things but I just got myself into that that position just by like I said staying consistent and literally just a, like asking a question sometimes it's it's just about asking and yeah you never know if you don't ask so absolutely and like you saw a an opportunity you mm -hmm. saw kind of like no one else was there so you just showed up so I want to get more into the dunk contest photos and things like that but how long were you doing this stuff for free before they hired you uh, probably like six months or so. Wow. Yeah. It definitely took a toll on my pockets, but like I was just so locked into to making it happen. And to me, it's not really about like, you know, at, at some point down in my life, it's like, okay, you got to take care of, you know, I have a girlfriend, have, you know, a child one day or something like that family. Uh, you got to be able to pay bills. But like for me, this, this craft, this thing, like it's a real passion. When you have a real passion for something, you're going to do it regardless. Yeah. So I think with that, like, even though I was making like minimum wage or doing everything for free, I was just trying to find a way to make it happen. And that's, that's kind of what you do when, when you want something. So, yeah. 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 No, it's amazing. Um, it's such a great story because it led to he personally, Mac personally asked you to come to the dunk contest, right? Well, the, I mean, I, I like, I know him a little bit. Like, I'm not going to say I know his number, this, that, and the third. But, like, we, like, hey, what's up? How are you? Yada, yada. Like, yeah. locker room stuff. But, um, like, the the one guy, Alex, who's, like, the, I don't want to butcher his, his title, like, business communication. Like, vice president of operations, whatever. He, he yeah. asked me if I wanted to go. And I was like, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we were on, I was on a road trip with the team, actually. We were in Alabama. Memphis and Ohio and he asked me then once we found out Mac was gonna be in the dunk contest I was like yeah absolutely I want to go so um yeah but I got to go in the locker room with Mac after and everything like that after his win took pictures of him with the with the trophy and it was just it was crazy it was absolutely crazy experience yeah I want to get more into that yeah. because it's so crazy that doing something for free six months not knowing what the opportunity is going to be and then you end up hanging out with literally the winner of the NBA dunk contest. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure you got, you were like in the area with other, oh, you yeah. know, like some of the best players in the world. Like, yeah. tell me about what that, how awesome that was for you. And like, you know, what it meant to like 
capture those photos and and yeah yeah just just at that time mac had been um signed to like a two-way contract officially which means he could play for the sixers or the blue coats depending on who needed him so the sixers media team was there too and um they had like a certain spot reserved for the sixers like all the way at the top and i was like at first at, when i went there i thought i was going to be on the floor like so i kind of got myself slightly bummed out about that but um but what i did is uh the next day because he played in a couple events like before the dunk contest like he did like a rising stars game the day before so we were just up in the stands i thought to myself all right i'm gonna show up early that day of the dunk contest and when they're doing all the other stuff and i found a seat like the third row and i was just praying nobody was gonna take the seat and literally throughout the whole stadium that whole section and whatnot the the one spot I was sitting in or like right around it the the person didn't show up so I asked the people in that like is it cool if I stay here to shoot and uh they didn't care so I got extremely lucky just sitting down there being able to be close trying to capture uh like I did the same thing for the all-star game uh the dunk contest so I got like real lucky with that but it was it was dope you got to see people like Fat Joe was there uh Michael B. Jordan was there uh just a whole bunch of like other celebrities and it's like this, like it's surreal I'm sitting right here and literally like to that wall over there is like LeBron and I got a great picture of him uh doing his thing where he puts the chalk or whatever that is up in the air so yeah I, I was I was just shocked like how lucky I was and, and just so grateful to be there that's amazing man that is so cool yeah. so do you have any favorite photos from that whole experience that you want to talk about like because I know I've seen a few but do you, what are some of your like favorite moments from that that uh that trip yeah one thing that I learned like on the fly that someone taught me while I was there was like about my picture profile on the camera so before I was taking photos they were like kind of doled out um mm -hmm. basically is what that means so I turned that off and my pictures had so much more life to them and it couldn't come at the more perfect time so I got like like I mentioned the picture of LeBron he's like my favorite player of all time I think he's the greatest of all time that's a whole different discussion but like I said the picture of him with the chalk I uh, got, like, really good pictures of, like, Ja Morant dunking. Um, the dunk contest itself was, was pretty cool, like, getting those shots. So, um, yeah, just those are, like, a, a few couple that come to mind, getting pictures of Joel Embiid because I'm a Sixers fan as well. So, yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. So you've done, like, this is such a great thing for your portfolio, you know, for just an, a life experience. Mm -hmm. What is kind of, like, your – what are you going to try to do next? Like, what is it – because I know you've done some music videos – you, you've done a lot of event photography videos, you know, the, the creative skits that you do, the, the photography. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to get into? Man, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I definitely need to not need to be, but I want to be like in that field. But truthfully, like it's good to have a plan, but I just take each day one day at a time. I know my mom doesn't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to hear that. But like literally for me and my mental it's like taking it one day at a time. There's just certain things I try to do in a day. Uh, I'll try to apply to like video editing jobs and, and stuff like that. I, I thought I was almost going to be working for like this uh, yoga company, video editing, but LinkedIn, uh, it was like a scam, a whole scam. I, <laughs> I thought I was about to have like a full-time job. I had the full discussion with my parents about it and then uh, come to find out it was like a full, full scam. So what I was, just... What were they trying to do? It wasn't a real ad. It wasn't even a real ad on LinkedIn. They wanted, like, they had sent an offer letter. It was, like, the most official-looking thing, like, a whole process of screening questions. But, like, I never actually got to talk to somebody, like, on the phone. or Something just felt off about it. And uh, we, my girlfriend called the, uh, like, the headquarters or whatever and, and asked, like, is this, like, a real position? They said they were receiving, like, calls about, like, fake LinkedIn uh, things. So that fell through, but... Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I just take it one day at a time, and I know God is going to make a way for me, and I'm going to just keep in this field, and right now I'm just making content, stuff like that, and yeah. whatever happens, happens, really. Yeah, I remember when I was around your age, uh, maybe a little bit older, and I was graduating, and um, I was, like, really, you know, kind of stressed about trying to find a certain thing, like enter a certain, because there's so many different uh, areas you can get into with this creative stuff. And I remember Joel Warden hooked me up with his friend. Uh, ironically, his name is Jeff with a J though. Mm. And, uh, I've expressed that to him. We had like zoom calls and, um, or, or it wasn't even zoom wasn't popular at the time. It was more like Skype. And, uh, I remember expressing that to him. Like I'm trying to, you know, like you seem like you have a good attitude about it. Like you're open 
to everything that comes. And I was very like, I want to get into this. I want to get into this, but I don't know like what specifically he's like, you're at a perfect point because you can test everything out and find out like what's working, what you're passionate about, what, you know, what is clicking. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I still feel like I'm at that point, you know, I know where I want to go directing films and, you know, being a writer director. Um, but that's a thing you can do your whole life right now. It's about trying to like, you know, like you said, like find yourself, build those skills up. And, um, and yeah, so, uh, so you, you're kind of open to, uh, whatever comes, but say you're looking at yourself like 10, 15, 20 years down the line, like what is like a, a dream? You know, if somebody was like, you can make anything you want, you can do anything you want. What is kind of like the dream position or dream role or dream, you know, medium that you'd be in? Oh man. I mean, I think my whole life, like, just like what I tried to get back into now, just like finding a way, just like vlogging and just entertaining people, like whether that's somehow a show of some sort, a podcast, I don't, I don't exactly know. That's like at my deepest form, like, I guess working for myself in a sense, um, would be, would be my answer for, for that. Like, I just, that's, that's what I like to do is vlog and, and entertain people, make people laugh. Uh, I'm not like, the type to be like a comedian stand up kind of person, but just like just making content, being with friends, um, and stuff like that. I don't know how realistic that is, but that would be my answer to something like that. Yeah. Now is the best time for it. You see so many people doing that exact thing. And I feel like you have the perfect personality for that as well. And you're doing the right thing by making the stuff, you know, and, uh, and by being open to the opportunities that come your way. So, um, to talking about like your friends, mm -hmm. how has like your experience at Goldie been with, with friends like that? Cause I know you've, you know, you've been here, you know, for four, maybe this is your fifth year. Mm -hmm. Um, has there been, have you had like great friends over this period of time? Yeah. I mean, for sure. There's a lot of people, um, mainly like associated with like track cross country that th these are people that you see almost every day, people that I live with in the dorm. Mm -hmm. Um, so a couple of them like Ty Mayer, Youssef have been in my videos. Mike isn't here anymore. He goes, he's out of, out of college, but Mike has always been a, a good friend to me and, um, just something important like that I do. I just, whether I don't see him on campus, I call people every day. Any, anybody that watches this who knows that I call them, they know I call them every day, whether they answer or not. Mm. Um, that's just a big foundation of who I am is just checking up on my friends and seeing how they are. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely people that, that uh, support me or just even if they don't agree with something, they're going to tell me, which is super important. You don't want people, uh, real friends, aren't, aren't just going to yes you to death or, or things like that. They're going to give an opinion and try to help you. So definitely there's been a few people that I've built bond with over time. For that. Yeah, that's really cool. So another uh, question I have for you, because this is for my own personal interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you shoot a lot of music videos, or you—I don't know if you still do, but I know you did. Yeah. You did. Yeah, a I ton. just shot one a, a couple days ago. Actually, that's, that's yeah. amazing. I want to hear if you were comfortable sharing yeah. if you have any like great experiences, but also like sketchy experiences, because I've heard some some uh, about yeah. some sketchy. Ones. Nah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the. Uh, Starting starting out, I did a lot of, and still actually do a lot of work in like New York, um, in the in the Bronx, Brooklyn, stuff like that. And um, without going into too much detail, I mean these are just some areas that are a little, um, sometimes less fortunate than others. So um, just the the way of life around there is a, is a certain way, and that's just how it is. But um, coming into it, you know, that's not that's not me <laughs> or my uh, upbringing. So it's just something that I had to adjust to. It's something that I'm like used to now and just understand how it is. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely been times where there's a uh, the guns pointed at your face, like for the video. Sometimes the gun might not even be on safety, and that's a little <laughs> that's a little scary. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just. Every time I've worked with somebody, I've never been like threatened by the actual mm -hmm. actual person. It's just more of the uh, sometimes the surroundings, the unexpected. Like anything can happen at any given moment, just depending on what's happening, where you are. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely been a couple couple times where things are like a little little shaky or off. But that's just because that's not the environment that me or you or other people might not be used to. That's but that's that's how it is uh, for some people. So. So how did that start? Did you just start doing something for some local artists and then 
your name got around and people are just like, yeah, uh, you know, I got a, a guy named Zach who does music videos. Yeah, basically one of the uh, the kids I went to high school with, he, he was doing music and stuff and he let me shoot like one of his first first and like we did a couple music videos so uh i shot his first video for like 70 bucks or something like that and yeah. I, I immediately like loved it i i enjoyed it a lot i love music music fashion uh that that kind of stuff that's like right up my alleyway so we i did a lot of videos just locally in pa and stroudsburg and stuff like that and a lot of people from from that town are like from new york or uh, go back and forth between New York, depending on where their family is. So yeah, word would uh, start to spread around, and then go to New York, film a video for somebody, maybe somebody nearby who knows them. Word just starts bouncing around, and you know, you put things up on Instagram, or some of the videos would go on like a, a local rap page out there, and you know, they would tag you and stuff like that. So then people would just find out more and more. Yeah, so, yeah. that's amazing. You've done so many different things. It feels like a lot of pro- like great foundation for kind of what you're going to do next and yeah. setting a great example as well for communication medias that are uh, media majors that are currently here but as well like the future ones that come as they build the program so you know um do you have any advice for maybe like younger students who are either communication and media majors now or the ones that are going to come to goldie you know do you have any insights or or advice for them how to get started or yeah i i would just say like you got to you got to go after it. You got to take your camera or whatever it is that you're trying to do and just learn as much as you can if you're if you're willing. Like like I said, depending on how deep you want to go in the field is is how much you're, you're going to try to learn or whatnot. So uh, you just got to do it. Like sim- simple as that. At least with this, you just got to do it. And uh, the more you do, the better you're going to become at it because you just learn certain things. Your eye will learn certain things. And um, networking is also like a huge thing. Like I would be working at Foot Locker at the mall and I would just literally just ask people, like, do you know anybody that needs a video for anything? Like, literally, I don't care if it's uh, fashion, rap videos, like, if you're a cleaning service. Like, I try, I try to talk to anybody. You never know who might have a business or a need for the thing that you might do. And sometimes all it takes is a simple conversation. So Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, do you have any advice for the program itself that starts to build? Anything that could have helped you more or anything that could have you know, um, cause I know it's such an interesting field about like how you learn and things like that. But, but yeah, I think just, uh, just try to get it more on like campus. Like, like I said, I did a lot of classes that weren't here at all. I took like maybe one intro to film class, but that wasn't like, that was learning about like movie plots and stuff. But in terms of like, uh, camera stuff, like, they got to get you or somebody like a professor out here to, uh, I think, get more involved as, as the field grows here. I think just try to get it more like on campus rather than sending us online or us or the kids online. Stuff yeah, like that. yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And to kind of close this out, what do you feel like you're going to take with you from your overall GBC experience, the opportunities that you have found being in the area? you know, athletic experience, all those things, the friends, what do you think you're going to take from GBC into kind of like the next phase of your life? I think the person I was when I came here to who I am now is like, I I feel like I've grown a lot. Like I still like to joke and be like immature online and stuff like that. But like as an actual person, um, just like the the course of events of things that have happened to me over the past four or five years uh, through music videos, relationships, friendships, just like a whole bunch of other things. Like um, I think as you just grow older, like you need to be this just aside from like film stuff. You just got to be open minded. empathetic towards people because you never know what someone's going through um and just like just listen sometimes you know what i'm saying you don't gotta always speak or have an opinion on something so quick because you never know what the other side might be i mean especially like with social media nowadays it's it's a little uh, tough world we live in that people have a lot of like mental mental things going on so um i think just in whatever it is i do i just try to listen to advice be open-minded be empathetic and just be genuine and as true to yourself and authentic as you can be. I think that's really, and no matter what I end up doing from here on out, is what I at least strive or try to do to the best of my degree. Yeah, no, I think that you've done amazing so far, and uh, 
I can't wait to see what you do next. And you better keep posting those skits because yeah, I, yeah, I got another them. one ready to go soon. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we might have to bring Becoming Golden back, right? He seems like the perfect person to do a, a, uh, a I don't know if you've ever saw that mockumentary series we did, but I'll I think s- I've seen like an episode or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of a version of, of that. But mm-hmm. thank you so much for coming, man. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Yeah, really looking forward to everything you do next, man. Yep, thank you. I'm excited. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. See you.